Welcome back, panelists here. Carol Lee, the NBC News Washington Managing Editor, Democratic pollster Cornell Belcher, and Republican strategist Sarah Fagan. A little more intimate here. Let's start with the Ron DeSantis news. You know, um, every month since February, there has been a story about Ron DeSantis has problems. We had in February impatience because he hadn't gotten in. In March, donors were starting to look at other challengers. In April, it was, uh-oh, there already needs to be a shakeup, and he hadn't formally announced. In May, more donors fretting. In June, uh, the campaign launch itself fizzled, and now, once again, here we are. And this FEC report was the picture of a bloated campaign that we've seen before, and the Scott Walker parallels from 2015 are suddenly here. Um, is this a time to panic in DeSantis' world? Well, you can see it in the sense that they already had this shakeup. There's expected to be more to come in that space. And the, the FEC report, what it did was really underscore and confirm a lot of the concerns that donors had, that mm -hmm. people who wanted DeSantis to be the Trump alternative had. When you talk to allies of the governor, they will say that his strategy is win Iowa, play a long game, mm -hmm. put in the work, grind it out. The question is, do they have the resources to go the distance like yeah. that? And right now what you're seeing is he had some big donor support. Right. The grassroots is not there. It's with former President Trump. And so how he executes this strategy is really a big question. Yeah, I was just going to say, sorry, we did some analysis here. He's got a lot too many maxed out donors uh, already. Uh, he only got 14% of his haul from small donors. There was a story about, oh, yeah, they're, they're trying to be more honest about their small donor mm -hmm. fundraising. I think that's what you say when you want to explain away why you're not doing this. We, you've seen, we were just talking before, yeah. there, there always is this one campaign that sort of their eyes got bigger than their stomach. Yeah, I mean, they were running the campaign of inevitability, and it was them and Trump, and that's not what's happening. Yeah. You see Chris Christie on the rise in New Hampshire. You see Tim Scott becoming the darling of donors. They have to fundamentally adjust their mindset. Uh, which is that they're going to have to knock off everyone else and then be the person who takes on Trump. And there's still plenty of time to do that, and he has mm -hmm. plenty of resources to do that. But he's going to have to fundamentally right. kind of adjust his strategy. Cornell, a lot of DeSantis supporters are going to point to something that you were a part of, which was 2007, <laughs> Barack Obama. <laughs> you know, donors were fretting. How come he hasn't caught, yeah. uh, caught Hillary yet? Is, is that fair? Or is that uh, missing something? Well, it, it, the dynamics are, 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 are very different here. Uh, it, one of the things that, and look, I would argue that, that it's, it's, real, it's really early. Mm -hmm. and that this, that I don't is, argue that, but that's okay. I don't think it's early uh, anymore. I don't think it's early anymore yeah. either. I was yeah. going to get to that point. Yeah. And, but, but, you, but you also see one of the things that's most disturbing about DeSantis is, is that he's losing support. And all the polls that we're seeing now, he's not, I mean, he has, he's weaker now than he was uh, a month ago and two months ago. We never, we never saw that with Barack Obama. Barack Obama started out 20 points behind Hillary right. everywhere. We made the argument that, again, this is not a national election. We will take this state by state. Well, this is what DeSantis is arguing. We'll take the state by state. But Barack Obama wasn't losing support. Right. DeSantis has shown up and voters have taken a look and they pulled back from him. I, I do think Cornell makes an important point. That has been, I mean, you just see it. It is a good point, uh, which is what I sort of stand by in my statement, which is you kind of got to fundamentally shift your mindset here, mm -hmm. which is now you're in the game of inches and you have to survive on the debate stage. Acknowledge today you're probably not going to be the winner of the debate and start to downplay expectations and then inch yeah. by inch go win Iowa, which is what the campaign is saying is a big part of their strategy. They're going to have to win Iowa. And if that were to happen... Yeah. then certainly we'd be having a very different conversation. But real quick, oh, yeah. part, of the, yeah. part of the issue with DeSantis trying to downplay expectations and kind of run as if he's the underdog now is that is not part of his brand. His mm. brand is, I'm Strength. a winner, yeah. I'm strong, I'm going to beat Trump, I'm, I'm the alternative, it's me. And so that's going to be, it'll be interesting to watch how he tries to navigate that because it's so counterintuitive to what he's presented himself as. Really quickly, can I make a quick, quick yeah. point? The, the, the problem is that... You, you've got to make up, make it up in the, in the debates. I think the debates now become more important because, you, because look, you're not going but to spend advertising. What happens if there's no Trump in the debate? If you're, if if you're, you're DeSantis, not, he needs Trump he, in but, that but, debate. I, 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 so I, I totally disagree. This is kind of my point, which is this is no longer an election between Trump and DeSantis. It's an election between Trump and everybody else. And so oh. who is going to be the, the person in So if you're DeSantis, yeah. would you actually not want Trump in the first because debate now? Is, uh, actually contrast yourself with Tim Scott? Uh, potentially. Hmm. Potentially. I mean... 
this is they have to have a fundamental mind shift because they are not going to clear the field. They haven't cleared the they field. They messed up. They had and a shot. They, they and had they a blew shot it. Yeah. and it's over. And right. now the field is on the ascent. Yeah. And he's going to have to figure out how to beat down the field. And sure. if I'm Trump, I don't get in debate. I, I would tell Trump if I were Trump, I wouldn't do debate because because mm-hmm. you're 30 points ahead. Only thing you can do is take punches on that yeah. debate stage. Hey, Carol, before we go, you have some reporting out of the White House. They, we, we talked a little bit about the whole what's going on with the defense bill and military promotions and that the White House wants to try to make this more public. Yeah, they've already dialed it up. You heard the president mm-hmm. weigh in on this. But what I'm told by administration officials is that this week, starting this week, they're going to really point to very specific examples of how this hold is affecting mm-hmm. you know, everything from the chain of command to military facilities in different states to military families, including in Alabama. Huntsville mm-hmm. has a large military population there. And so they're, they're yeah. going to lean in, in in that sense. And the, the through line that they're going to draw to the presidential race or that's inherent in this is that what Tuberville is doing, what was passed in the National Defense Authorization Act by the House, which focused on abortion, transgender care, equity and diversity uh, programs, that that is a direct correlation to the Republican Party as a whole under the Trump. Sarah, how would you advise Tommy Tuberville to, to, it seems like he is looking for an exit ramp and doesn't know how to find it. Well, I think part of it uh, is, Senator Sullivan said, there's going to be a chance during this debate in the Senate uh, to horse trade some of these various amendments and to figure out what is the path forward. And that's he's probably going to need his colleagues at this point to give him that off ramp. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.